run through the electric bike conversion. Start at the main bit. We've got 500 watt uh, rear motor. Bought that from Amazon. Uh, I think it's about 100, 150 quid. Um, comes complete. Got the rim, tyre, and everything. Uh, so there's nothing much to do there. My dropouts are a little bit on the narrow side, so I had to open them up a bit just by using a threaded steel rod. Um, can't remember what the exact gap was, I think it's about 13 and a half mil and they had to open it up to about 14 and a half. And I've had to add a couple of extra washes in there as well. Uh, I've not sorted the gears out yet because they, they tend to drop off at the end. Uh, <laughs> so I've just got it stuck in the one gear at the moment. but. Uh, just for testing it's okay. Um, still not tidied everything up, wiring from the motor just runs up here, goes into the speed controller which comes with this bag which is way too small. Um, battery, got one of these bottle type batteries, uh, they're pretty expensive but I thought it'd be a neat and tidy option. That just bolts onto the, uh, the down tube where your water bottle or whatever would normally go. Uh, it's a 36 volt system. I think this is 10.1, yeah, 10.4 amp hours. Um, not sure what sort of mileage it'll, it'll do. I haven't really, I've only really just sort of been around the block locally, uh, so I'm not going to give it a proper test out yet. I'm hoping it'll be good for 12 to 15 miles, possibly more, uh, but we'll see. Um, so fitting it at this end, you've got to take your original brakes off. Uh, my brakes and gears were all combined, so I've had to leave this part of the brake on. The original hand closing device was on here, but I've had to leave these on. Uh, also, the uh, brake cables don't fit into these new brakes very well. You can see, hopefully there fit in properly but the brakes do still work. I've only got um, block brakes that work on the rims on here, no disc brakes. Um, but yeah they work fine. And there's also supposed to be a little actuator in there that cuts the cuts the motor off. Um, yeah I think that's about it really. Oh sorry. Um, throttle control there's no digital display or anything. I'm thinking about getting a Turner G watt meter hooking that up and maybe mounting that on here somewhere just to give me an idea of uh, voltage and uh, amps and stuff like that. I have an idea you might be able to fit one of the proper cycle uh, analyst displays onto it uh, but they're quite expensive and I don't really, it's only a cheap setup this, well I'll say cheap. The wheel isn't too bad but the battery is uh, expensive in comparison. Supposedly I I think it's supposed to be Samsung or Panasonic batteries inside, um, but it's from China, so who knows. Um, you can unlock it here to take it off the bike, well, there's a charging adapter there. I bought this, it came with a charger. I'm hoping I can use my uh, remote control um, charger as well, I'll, I'll have to look into that. that little bit at the bottom doesn't seem very well protected there. I might have to cover that with um, electric liquid elec electrical tape to keep the water out because it's in a really bad spot there. These are just the power cables going up to the ESC and it's just like a big uh, ESC for your, um, for your planes or whatever really. Perhaps a little bit more complicated. Uh, you've got all the connectors here for the brake cutoffs. There's some extra ones that aren't used. I don't use the pedal assist so I didn't install that although the kit does come with it. Um, yes I think that's about it down that end. Uh, control is just a thumb operated. Bike is quite heavy, the wheel itself is really heavy. Don't know the exact weight, uh, you'd have to look it up online if you look at Amazon. The company this came is called Reese Joy, I would say it's a 36 volt 500 watt motor. Um, you've got a kill switch there that cuts off the power or back on again 
and you've just got a thumb control which are mounted on the left hand side seem to be more convenient uh, no wind at all tonight just come about two miles from home uh, flat out no pedaling seems to be about 22 23 miles an hour uh, so yeah that's about it seems decent whether it lasts or not we shall see uh, yeah, I'll try and get the wires tidied up for next time, um, but I'm still just testing it out and tweaking one or two bits and bobs. All right, put me on the front and we'll, we'll ride around the block a bit. Switch to the um, camera in its case now, uh, mounted on the helmet. Um, I haven't got the open back on it, so I'm just going to have to narrate over the top of this. I'm sorry if the road noise on the others is a bit loud, but uh, it's just the way it is. So, uh, yeah, we'll just carry on riding around the village. Um, such a bad day today, a little bit overcast, not much wind, not cold or anything, just uh, having good fun running it round. Burn these lads off any time. <laughs> yeah, just on the local estates here. Probably about a mile from home, 
it was great fun being out on the bike. I've not been on the bike for ages. The bike itself is about 20, maybe 25 years old. It's a Saracen um, Tough Tracks, I think it is. Uh, it's quite a well built, solid bike. Um, the main thing is the, uh, the rear triangle where the wheel attaches is, is pretty solid. I don't think it needs um, any torque bars to stop it twisting. I really had a tough job trying to push the uh, the dropouts out, just use my foot power. I tried try to open them up, just use my uh, legs at first, but wasn't having it. So I had to get the steel rod, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, and just open them up um, so it was big enough to get the wheel in. Uh, it was pretty tight, and then the gears were just catching on the frame, that's why I had to add the extra washers in, just as spaces to stop the, uh, the, the little small gear on the cassette catching the frame. <coughs> uh, still got to sort the gears out and uh, at the moment it's just in the biggest gear on the middle ring and uh, that allows me to do a little bit of pedalling as well. Uh, that could do to go up and the gear too and then I can uh, pedal a little bit more. Um, that way the battery should last a bit, a bit longer. Uh, my work from home was about nine miles away. So I might make it nine miles to work but I wouldn't make it back again without recharging it so I'll have to try and find a way of recharging it. Hopefully I can do it with my uh, uh, LiPo charger. If not I think the uh, battery chargers are reasonably cheap. I might just have to buy another one, keep on at work and then get to work. Charge it up during the day and then ride home again. Um, give that a go. It's a the wrong time of the year for doing that because the getting dark of a, of a morning now about the time I normally set off. I don't know what the journey time will be like. Currently it takes me about 25 minutes in the car. I guess travelling at 20 miles an hour average. Uh, journey time might be anything up to about 50 minutes so um, if the weather's decent one day and I might, might try it if I can get out of bed of the morning. Uh, so yeah, just getting near uh, to the end of the video, so uh, thanks for watch watching. I'll try and put links to uh, where I bought the wheel and uh, the battery from in the video. Any questions, hit me up. You could probably fit it in around about an hour. The only thing that slowed me down was um, just the, uh, the spacing on the dropouts. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I think there's just a little bit more video at the end of this. Um, I'll just go down where I live, there's no hills at all hardly. The only hills we've got is on the railway bridge. We don't actually have a railway line anymore, but we still got the bridge. Uh, this is the only hill that we've got going down it now, towards the boatyard by the river um, Douglas or Ashland, whichever you want to call it. So we're just heading down the hill now, past the graveyard. Bit bumpy down here, so I'm going pretty slow. Um, and the electronics aren't properly wrapped up yet, so I don't want to get any water in them. Uh, so I'll just whiz down here through the boatyard in a minute. One of the most scenic spots of the village. Um, yeah, coming to the boatyard now, that's all gated off these days. We used to be able to come down here when we were kids, no bother, and play around the boats and uh, get up to all sorts of mischief. Uh, loads of boats down here. I think some of the guys just buy them and say they're going to do them up and come down over a weekend and just <laughs> brew up and get away from the wives, I think. Uh, tide's fairly high at the moment. So, uh, yeah, I'll turn it around here and uh, head back up the hill. You probably, you might, if you watch the channel, you will have seen a few of my videos over flying this area. It's uh, quite nice to get down on the figgles and just fly over the boatyard and follow the river up to uh, up towards Tarleton and over to the east. 
of the river, it does come into the main river, which is the River Ribble, and then it goes out uh, towards Southport and towards Litherman, out to the sea. So yeah, we're, we're climbing back up the hill, it's a little bit bumpy on this bit, so we're still taking it steady. Uh, once we get past the graveyard, turn this corner, and uh, climbing up the hill. Um, I think I'm pedalling as well here, but I'm uh, not having to pedal very hard, but it is just a fairly steep hill. And uh, climbing up it, no bother at all. I'll leave you with the last little bit of the video, and uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all later.